I was barely into my 20s, still figuring out what I wanted in life. Back then, things were not exactly great. I was working two jobs, not because I loved them, but because I had to. Bills didn't care how much sleep I got, and mentally, I was struggling. Depression, some really dark days, just barely managing to keep it all together. I didn't have much of a social life, just a couple friends who didn't care that I was usually too broke to go out. There was one night I remember pretty clearly, though, and not just because it was weird. I'd been invited to this house party across town, and I honestly didn't feel like going. It was one of those stretches where everything felt pointless, but I figured maybe a change of scene might help. Just sitting around was getting old. Anyway, I headed out around 9 p.m., driving this old, beat-up car that had seen better days. It had this sputter whenever I tried to go over 50, so I stuck to the slower back roads. It was a mild night, cool but not cold, and the streets were mostly empty. You'd get the occasional passing car, but nothing unusual. I was almost zoning out, just focusing on the road. At some point, maybe halfway there, I noticed a car pulled over on the side, hazard lights flashing, which wasn't totally weird. It happens, right? But something made me slow down. I mean, part of me was thinking maybe someone was stranded and needed a hand. I'd been stuck with a dead battery enough times myself, so I figured, why not? I pulled up a bit ahead of it, just close enough to see what was going on, but not exactly parked next to it. It was an older car, dark green or maybe black, I can't remember now, but it had that beat-up look. Kind of like mine, honestly. No one was inside, though. I thought that was odd, so I stepped out to take a closer look, but something just felt off. You know how sometimes you just get this instinct, like something's not quite right? I walked up to the back of the car, mostly because I figured if someone was walking to get help, they'd have left a note or something on the window, right? And that's when I saw it. There was something dripping from the trunk, these thick, dark drops. I couldn't tell what it was at first. It could have been oil, maybe. But then I got closer, and yeah, it was blood. I know how that sounds, but there was this slow, steady drip. And it wasn't like a few drops, either. There was enough of it that it was pooling on the ground beneath the trunk. I remember just standing there, staring. My brain was trying to process it, like I was in shock. A hundred different thoughts were flying through my head. Was this a prank? Was there an animal in there? But then I realized I needed to call someone, so I grabbed my phone and dialed 911. My hands were shaking so bad. It's funny, really, my heart was racing, but my mind was completely blank. I just kept staring at the blood as I waited for someone to pick up. When I got through, I told them what I'd found, trying to keep my voice steady. The dispatcher asked me to stay on the line until officers arrived, so I waited there, just standing by the car, glancing around in case someone showed up to claim it. I mean, you'd think if this was some kind of emergency, someone would come running back, right? After maybe ten minutes, I saw the blue and red lights coming down the road. Two cop cars pulled up, and a couple of officers got out. They asked me to step aside while they checked the trunk. I was nervous. My mind kept going to the worst places, imagining what could be inside. But I was also relieved, thinking, all right, they'll figure it out, and I can just go to my party and forget all about this. So one of the cops popped the trunk, and, man, I wish I hadn't seen what was in there. The smell hit me first. It was this sour, metallic stench, like something rotting. There were these large plastic bags, black ones, and they were full. I couldn't see inside them, but there was no mistaking the blood that had soaked through in spots. One of the cops looked back at me, and I could tell from his face that this was serious. They started asking me questions, the usual stuff. If I'd seen anyone around, how long I'd been there. I kept telling them I didn't know anything, that I'd just pulled over to see if someone needed help. I think they could tell I was telling the truth, because they just nodded and let me sit back by my car while they radioed in for more help. Eventually they told me they'd run the plates on the car and found out it was stolen. No one had reported it missing yet, which was strange too. I mean, you'd think if your car was stolen, you'd notice pretty quick, right? They said they'd look into it, but there wasn't much else they could tell me. Just that I was lucky I didn't open the trunk myself. I remember driving away in a daze, like the whole thing was surreal. 
I actually made it to the party, though I barely talked to anyone about what happened. I think I mentioned it in passing to a friend, but we all just shrugged it off as some weird fluke. Who knows what was going on with that car, right? Back of my mind, it just feels unfinished. Like there's something more I don't know. Something about that night that I was just never meant to understand. Looking back now, I don't know what I'd do if it happened again. Part of me wishes I'd never pulled over, that I'd just kept driving. But another part of me wonders if there was a, a reason I was there, you know? This was a few years back, right around when things went sideways with my job. I'd been working in customer service at a tech company, pulling long hours and trying to keep my head above water, but it was draining me. I didn't know how bad I was getting until I started noticing how anxious I'd get just walking into the office, like I was holding my breath for hours. I couldn't sleep, and every little thing set me off, stuff that wouldn't have phased me before. So, after a while, I took a leave of absence. I needed a breather, and I thought, hey, maybe a little time away would do me some good. My family has this cabin about three hours out from the city, right on the edge of a big wooded area, and since nobody else ever used it, I figured I'd go stay there. The cabin's not anything fancy, just a small place with a bedroom, tiny kitchen, and a living room with this old plaid couch that I think we've had since before I was born. But it's quiet and surrounded by trees, so it seemed like the perfect spot to clear my head. The drive up was nice. I went early in the morning when the highway was still empty, and by the time I hit the smaller roads that wound through the woods, the sun was starting to rise, casting long shadows across the pavement. I remember thinking that maybe this was exactly what I needed, some time away from all the noise and people. I felt myself relax a bit for the first time in months. When I got there, I settled in, unpacked, and spent most of that first day just doing nothing. By evening, I'd managed to get through a couple of chapters in an old paperback I'd found on the shelf, and I'd had more tea than I could count. Around dusk, I went outside to sit on the porch and watch the sun go down. The cabin's in a pretty isolated area, so you don't see any other houses, just trees and a little dirt trail that leads to the main road. It was quiet, and I was finally feeling like I could breathe again. After a couple of days, I settled into a routine, reading, making simple meals, taking walks through the woods during the day. I noticed a few weird things here and there, like an old boot lying just off the path one afternoon. It was beat up and caked in mud, and I remember thinking it looked like it'd been there for a while. I figured it was some hikers, though I never saw anyone around. It didn't bother me. I wasn't looking to chat with anyone anyway. The third night was when things started to feel off. I'd been reading until pretty late, and I must have dozed off on the couch. When I woke up, it was dark outside, and the room was dim, with just a sliver of moonlight slipping through the blinds. I glanced at the clock. It was a little past 3 a.m. I was about to go back to bed when I noticed something strange out the window. It took me a second to make sense of it. There was this faint light coming from somewhere out in the woods, just a soft, flickering glow. It wasn't close to the cabin, maybe a couple hundred yards out, but it caught my eye. I thought it was someone with a flashlight, like maybe another hiker who'd gotten lost. But the light stayed in one place, which seemed odd. It didn't move around, and it wasn't getting any closer. I watched it for a minute, half expecting it to disappear, but it stayed put, flickering slightly. I figured it was probably some reflection, maybe from a distant house or car, so I decided to leave it alone and went to bed. But that night, I slept terribly. I kept waking up, thinking I heard something outside, a sort of faint shuffling or maybe just the wind moving through the trees. I tried to tell myself it was nothing, but I couldn't shake this feeling of unease. The next morning, I shook it off. Daylight has a way of making everything feel a little less intense, you know? I made myself some breakfast and tried to forget about it. But that day, when I went out for my usual walk, I noticed something strange near the path I'd been taking. Spots of dried blood on some leaves. It wasn't a lot, just a few splotches, and I might not have noticed if I hadn't been looking at the ground. I tried to think of a logical explanation, maybe an injured animal or something. But it was strange. 
That night, I tried to go to bed earlier, hoping to sleep better. I woke up again around the same time, close to 3 a.m., and this time I felt this weird sensation, like I wasn't alone. I stayed still, listening, but the only sound was my own breathing. I almost convinced myself it was all in my head. But then I heard it, a soft creak like someone was on the porch outside. I lay there, holding my breath, straining to hear. It was quiet for a minute, and then came another creak, closer this time. I felt my heart hammering in my chest, and I slowly got out of bed, making my way toward the door as quietly as I could. I flicked on the porch light, hoping it would scare off whoever or whatever was out there. Nothing. The porch was empty, and everything looked as it should. I tried to laugh it off, but I felt too uneasy to go back to bed. I sat in the living room for a while, just waiting, listening. Eventually, I drifted off on the couch again. When I woke up in the morning, I noticed something odd near the edge of the porch. A hat. It looked like one of those old canvas hunting hats, dark green and frayed around the edges. Next to it, there was a small handsaw, and next to that, there was a streak of blood leading off into the woods. I just staring, trying to make sense of it. The sight of blood, more than just the spots I'd seen the day before, made my stomach turn. I had this horrible feeling, like I'd stumbled into something I shouldn't have. I called the police, and they came out that afternoon. They took some samples, questioned me, and even did a quick sweep of the woods nearby. But they didn't find anything, or anyone. A few days later, they confirmed the blood was human, but didn't have much else to tell me. There wasn't enough evidence to figure out what had happened, and nobody had been reported missing in the area. I asked about the hat and the saw, but they didn't seem like they had any good answers. And to this day, I still don't know what happened. I was talking to Cody last weekend, and it reminded me of this one night we had back in our early 20s. I was in a rough place then. Life wasn't going anywhere, it felt like. I just moved back to my hometown after a failed attempt at college, which didn't help with the whole existential crisis I had brewing. I was juggling two part-time jobs to keep myself afloat, and most nights, I was too tired to even think about doing anything fun. Cody had been my buddy since middle school, and back then, we'd get into a fair amount of harmless trouble, sneaking out, making stupid dares, that sort of thing. So it wasn't surprising when one night he calls me up, asking if I wanted to check out this old building he found deep in the woods. He thought it might be some abandoned community hall, and knowing Cody, he'd probably been wanting to poke around in there since he first saw it. I needed the distraction, so I went along with it. We didn't head out till pretty late, maybe around 11. The night was a bit chilly for summer, with that weird quietness that makes you realize how isolated you are. We had this narrow dirt path to walk down, just wide enough for one person at a time, with the trees closing in around us on both sides. The place looked like it hadn't seen life in years. When we finally got there, it was this one-story boxy structure made of faded brick, with half the windows smashed out and some graffiti on the walls. Not your classic haunted house vibe, but it had its own abandoned, eerie charm. I remember thinking it could have been a gathering spot back in the 70s, maybe for school dances or community events. We didn't bring flashlights, which was stupid in hindsight, so we were just relying on our phones. The inside was pretty much gutted. Empty walls, dust on the floor, the smell of mold and mildew hitting us immediately. I was coughing from it, and Cody kept laughing every time I tried to cover my face with my shirt. We kept moving, though, our footsteps echoing a bit too loudly for comfort. The rooms were mostly bare, some broken chairs and old tables stacked in corners, and the occasional faded poster peeling off the wall. Nothing seemed weird at first, but then Cody pointed out a spot in one of the corners where there were a few unopened cans of food. It was all lined up neatly, along with some cheap plastic utensils and a couple of water bottles. It didn't fit the scene at all. Someone's been here recently, Cody muttered. I could see the unease in his face, even though he tried to play it cool. We didn't really think too much of it at that moment, maybe just a homeless guy passing through. But as we looked around, we kept finding these small things that started to add up in a strange way. 
In one room, we saw this old, dirty mattress just shoved against the wall with a few blankets on top, which were surprisingly clean. Right next to it were some ropes, like thick, heavy ones, and a few zip ties scattered around. Cody laughed nervously and made some joke about a creepy, doomsday prepper. But I remember thinking that whoever had been there was way too organized for that. And then, near the back of the building, we stumbled across this closet or storage space. The door was missing, and when we shined our phone lights inside, we saw something even weirder. There were these piles of old newspapers, and tucked in between them what looked like a wig, just lying there as if someone had yanked it off in a hurry. The place reeked more than anywhere else in the building, a mix of mold and stale air, and the smell was strong enough to make my eyes water. We were about to leave when I noticed a notebook on the floor, partially hidden under some papers. I picked it up. The pages were filled with random scribbles, nothing really readable, but it was obvious someone had been using it recently. Cody nudged me, a bit impatient, so I left the notebook where it was and turned to leave. But I'll never forget that last page I saw. There was this crude sketch, like a stick figure of a woman with a big X over her face. The whole thing was starting to get to me. Cody, on the other hand, still seemed unbothered. He was taking pictures, probably to laugh about it later. But I kept glancing around, feeling this growing unease. You know that feeling you get when you're sure someone's watching you? I swear I could feel eyes on us, even though there was no one else there. By then, I'd had enough. I told Cody we should go, and for once, he didn't argue. We made our way back to the front, but as we were about to step out, we heard this faint rustling sound from somewhere behind us. Cody froze, and so did I. We stood there, straining our ears, trying to convince ourselves it was just some animal outside. We practically ran down that dirt path, our footsteps pounding against the ground. I didn't stop until we reached Cody's car, my heart hammering in my chest. Neither of us said anything for a while as we caught our breath. Cody tried to laugh it off, saying we'd freaked ourselves out over nothing, but I could see the tension in his face. Later, Cody convinced me to report it, just to be safe. When the cops showed up, they went through the building and took a look at the stuff we'd found. We didn't hear much after that, but a few weeks later, Cody told me he'd heard that they'd found DNA traces back there. It matched a missing person, a woman who had disappeared two years earlier. That was the last we heard. They never found out who was living there or what exactly happened to her. I don't like thinking about that night. Someone, somewhere, was watching us the whole time, hiding in the shadows, waiting for us to leave. It's one of those memories that creeps up on you when you're alone, making you question every little sound in the dark.